Hi, I'm Chef Raphael and welcome to today's video. I'm going to show you how to make a delicious chicken schnitzel, which is basically chicken that is bread crumbed. Um, I'm serving it with some potato wedges uh, and some roast veggies in a stew, in a tomato sauce. Now, all these ingredients, all these that I have on this plate, I've actually cooked it using the Philips air fryer. Um, in this video, you'll see how to actually make the schnitzel, that's how the bread crumbing and everything, and how you'll actually bake it. Because this one, we usually um, deep fry it, but today I'll show you how to cook it in the air fryer using 80% less oil. That's what it says and that's what it is when you're cooking it with this. For the potatoes, I cut them up in wedges, brush them with some oil and then throw them in the air fryer also. And the vegetables here, cook the vegetables um, on the side and then I have some tomato and olive sauce that I've mixed it with the cooked vegetables. It's one complete meal. In this video, you'll see how easy it is to make it. Let's get started. So welcome to my channel and if you are new to the channel, please subscribe so that you are actually notified whenever I have a new recipe out. Uh, this channel is all about making you a better home cook. For a home baker, I will publish weekly videos on cooking and baking. Now, uh, today's recipe, again, um, what I'm doing is actually creating a whole meal. So I'll start with the potatoes and I want to show you the versatility of using the Philips air fryer. Now. I already have some my potatoes cut up as wedges. You can cut them in the shape you like. Um, so I'm adding salt and pepper. And uh, if you have rosemary, if you have thyme, you can add it. Um, and then, so first mix the salt and pepper into the potatoes. And now the whole idea when using an air fryer you probably would deep fry these potatoes. Right now you're using an air fryer, you use 80% less oil um, because for the oil part, I'm actually even just going to brush the potatoes with oil as opposed to deep frying them, if you are, especially if you're making like chips. So the oil is important, especially whenever you're cooking um, um, food, especially vegetables which don't have their own oil. If you're cooking meat because you can actually cook meat uh, a steak in this um, it's really it's actually very delicious you can uh, in this case i'll also show you how to cook it uh, with the chicken um, so whenever you you whenever you're cooking meat you can skip the fat or the oil or the butter but for the vegetables you definitely need some oil and that's what i've done so that's enough um, so right now i'll Pour my potatoes. Now the capacity for this is about 80 ml, 800 ml, um, and these potatoes is enough for two. So what if you have family of four, you can actually do this in batches. So this one, this is the first batch, and then cook the next batch um, after this. So it doesn't take long to cook because. Um, the whole idea with an air fryer, first of all, it's a small compartment. Hot air, uh, hot, uh, uh, there's an element on top and there is also a fan. So the fan will actually blow the hot air downwards. And with this one, it has a special feature whereby at the bottom, we have the this star shape, which actually helps in uh, circulating the air as it gets into the air fryer. So it makes it really efficient and fast. So I'm going to set it at 200 degrees. Now ideally you can, especially usually when you're cooking, it's a good idea to preheat your either, when, especially if you're cooking with an oven, that's something I always say, but even for this one, you need to preheat it. But the reason why I've not preheated it is especially because when you're cooking something like potatoes, even if they get into a cold oven, they will not, you know, um, the cooking process will not affect um, them when they are still cold. So 
just set the time, just set the temperature. This only has two dials, the temperature one, and I've set it at 200. And the time, I'll estimate it to be about 15 minutes um, for this amount of potatoes. And it's good to start with 15. If you need more, if you need it to be slightly more brown than and crispy, you can always add some more time. So uh, we also have dials here. I mean, indication of how to cook your uh, vegetables or meat in this, because even when it comes to baking, you can even bake with this um, air fryer. But more on that when I'm doing the chicken. So while this is cooking, I'll now show you how to make the chicken uh, schnitzel. Um, basically, it's bread crumbed chicken breast. And the first thing you need to do is to, if you have a nice piece of chicken breast like that, which is skinless. Now, when you cook it as it is, um, this side is thicker. So it's a good idea to always um, either, if you have a very thick, let's say a, a thick chicken breast like that one, what you, you can do is take a knife um, and then butterfly it and basically you slit like that and then it opens up like that so that it's a little bit more flat uh, and not thick on one side and not so thick on the other side. So in this case, the pieces that I have are small. So instead of literally cutting them into two, like I was saying, is I'll pound them using a meat mallet. Um, and basically the idea is to try and make it uh, the same thickness from one side to the other. So like I said, uh, now it's flat, it's almost the same thickness from uh, one end to the other. And that's now it's a good piece. Now your um, ingredients. So you need all purpose flour, you need an egg wash and breadcrumbs. First thing you need to do is season your uh, meat. So salt and pepper, both sides. Now, it's also very important to season your flour and breadcrumbs. So, some black pepper. Now, the reason why you're doing this is because you do not want um, this not to have salt because if salt is here and it's lacking in the in the breadcrumbs or even, even on the flours as well, the meat will not be as salty as, um, as you need it to be. So it's always a good idea to season both the flour, most importantly the breadcrumbs. Uh, and these breadcrumbs also had, I had, um, I'd also added some um, paprika. Um, you can, if you have some thyme, you can add it, just, uh, chopped thyme, either fresh one or the dried one. You can add a little bit of rosemary, that would still add some flavor, or just leave it plain. And at least have either some paprika, salt and pepper. First part is to flour the chicken on both sides, making sure that you shake off the excess and make sure also all sides actually coated with the flour. And then here I have an egg wash, which is basically just two eggs that I've beaten. To make it lighter, some, or to add, let's say you're making a lot of this, um, let's say a few, uh, quite a number of pieces, you can also add a little bit of milk um, or water to increase the quantity of the egg. If you don't like egg, you can use milk or especially buttermilk would be the best um, to soak this because the next thing, the reason why we need the egg is so that when you place it in the breadcrumb, the breadcrumb will actually be able to stick to the chicken. This hand, I'm using it when I'm dipping it in the wet, um, in the eggs. And then this one is dry, so I'm using uh, the left hand so that I don't get uh, breadcrumbs fingered, fingers that I've actually breadcrumbed. So that's the dry, then egg, that's the wet, so using your other hand. 
into the breadcrumb then using the other hand so there you have it so the one way you can actually do this if you can do a double coat and double coat is basically um dipping this the one that which has the breadcrumbs back actually what i'll do i'll use one because i'm cooking both of them this will have a thicker breadcrumb coating into the breadcrumb uh, now the whole idea for this is to give it a crunchier finish and then we await for the fryer to be ready what i've done is started with the potatoes because that's very intentional potatoes when they are done i'll put them in a container or a bowl uh, or a plate and then cover them um, and then while that while i'm cooking the chicken so when you start with the chicken uh, the chicken should be the last one to cook because when you start with it what will happen it will dry up when you know when you leave it uh, from on the outside waiting for everything else to cook just make sure whenever you're doing this and you're using the air fryer you start with something like the potato the starch and you finish off with the meat i had cooked um, also some mixed vegetables onion peppers carrots uh, zucchini uh, in the air fryer this is now something you can even do in advance because this will actually be served as my vegetable but i'll serve it together with some um, i'll cook it with some tomato sauce tomato and olive sauce uh, so that i have a stewy uh, vegetable uh, stewy vegetable some uh, the chicken and the potatoes so if you like you can use any other vegetables uh, sauteed vegetables or greens uh, but in this case what I wanted to show you, you can still do the same, uh, you can use the same uh, machine to cook everything from the vegetable to the meat. And right now we have the starch cooking the potatoes. So let's wait for the potatoes to cook and then we'll start cooking the chicken. So the potatoes are ready. Um, this is what I was saying, the potatoes can, you can easily reheat the potatoes if you need them very hot. But for the chicken, you need it uh, from the air fryer to the plate and serve as opposed to starting with the chicken and then finishing off with the potatoes so they have actually taken 15 minutes and they are nice and crispy on the outside and soft on the inside i've used minimal oil so i'm looking forward to this and then now for the uh, chicken now whenever you're cooking with um, breadcrumbs uh, in a dry heat like in this case we are using an air fryer a good idea to brush with some oil because so that they actually the, the breadcrumbs will actually cook and brown this is sunflower oil i've tried without using the oil um without doing exactly what i'm doing right now it will still cook but it will not give give the same crispiness that you need in uh this kind of a uh, meat but when you're cooking the meat like the beef steak uh, which already has or even the chicken breast which without the breadcrumbs you will not need the oil like I'm doing it right now so that's good so arrange it in the basket I'll set it in the air fryer at 180 degrees and i'll set it at 15 minutes as well actually about 10 minutes it's actually um it should actually take about 10 minutes um if it needs more time i'll add more time uh, so start with less time now in this case uh 10 minutes i i believe should be enough uh, for this thickness that i have and when it's ready i'll show you how it looks so the chicken is ready 10 minutes was actually enough that's delicious now um, how you actually tell it's cooked is by the time the, uh, the breadcrumb is actually brown it will actually be cooked and this one uh, and I can tell because of the oozing of the liquid here is the one that had the single coating and this one that looks more dry is the one that had the double co coating and it's crispier than this they are both okay but this is perfect both sides are brown and all you need to do is 
serve it like that place it on the plate uh potatoes are nice and crispy they are still warm and all you need to do is and this is mayonnaise you can serve it with mayonnaise or um just plain as it is so there you have it um chicken schnitzel served with um roast um with the uh, potato wedges and um roast vegetable stew um very simple all made using the philips air fryer the um, in case you have if, in case you're cooking for more people now that's the one question that i actually get a lot um, um whenever um, uh, i've shared other recipes especially for the air fryer um, you can actually cook it in batches so this you can see you can cook two and something like this you can't overlap you cannot put one on top of the other they actually have to cook one layer at a time if it's beef steak the same thing uh, for potatoes you saw you can actually cook it even when it's almost full just note that at some point you'll need to shake them so that they actually cook on the inside but uh, i hope you've learned something new i've been your host chef rafael uh, please follow me on facebook instagram and twitter for more recipe ideas and be tuned to my channel and please subscribe and if you like this button put the thumbs up and spread the word the air fryer is the best machine for you until next time goodbye